Alrighty guys, so today I'm reacting to my first gambling experience. I'm gonna get onto the video before I get to like and subscribe. Thank you. Okay, there. Atomic animation. My first gambling experience happened when I was maybe eight or nine years old. I never no, gambled before. No, I didn't sneak before. into a casino or bet on chicken fights. That happened when I was 12. No, my first participation in gambling involved the kids' currency of my elementary school's recess grounds, Slammers. Never heard of that before. Up in the 90s, you might remember Pogs and Slammers, generically known as Milk Caps, which was a popular game for kids that involved using two types of flat discs. The Pogs are typically cardboard cutouts with designs on either side. I remember I had this Pog Maker where you could insert cutouts of magazines or literally whatever drawing you want and make Pogs with them. It was neat. Unfortunately, the kids at my school didn't give a shit about Pogs. We only cared about Slammers. The heavier disc made from plastic and sometimes rubber and metal, but we banned those from play. The rules were simple. First, you and your opponent select an amount of Pogs to bet. But since my school went hard, we bet Slammers. Once you've agreed on the amount, you pile them on top of each other face down in whatever order you wish. Then you select who goes first, usually by calling heads or tails on a slammer flip. And then you take turns using one of your slammers, separate from the pile, and throwing it at the pile to flip them face up. If the person manages to flip some over, you take the remaining face down slammers and restack them, and then it's the other person's turn. Whoever flips the most, wins. Oh, no I get it now, yeah. Fun. Everyone played for keeps, so whichever ones you flip, was then yours. I didn't really understand the stakes of when you bet something that belonged to you and didn't know for sure if you'd win it back, but I was a kid. The concept of value was still in development. It was a new experience. I didn't really have that many slammers, I don't exactly remember, but I assume pog sets probably only come with like two or four slammers because you didn't really need any more than that to flip the pogs with another player. But then at school you have kids with long cylindrical cases, pouches, and deep pockets full of slammers. Like you could tell which kid was ballin' depending on how loud he jingled when they walked. I don't know who determined their value, but some slammers were apparently more rare than others. So some people would even bet with multiple of their less valuable slammers to match its worth when challenging someone. I was one of those people who apparently had a rare slammer, or maybe mine was just in better condition and more colorful, I guess. I'm not sure which one I had, it could have been a Simba design from Lion King, it might have been Spawn, it might have been a Star Wars one, I don't remember. But some kid at recess saw that I was looking to play, and he bet two of his slammers for one of mine. I accepted. Heads or tails? Um, heads? No wait, tails! Um, okay, so then it's my turn. And just like that, I lost my first slammer. I mean, looking back, like, uh, okay, whatever, it was just a slammer, probably worth, like, less than a dollar. But no, I was devastated, man. As a kid, I only owned so many things, so to lose anything, it hit hard. I had to win it back. Wait! I'll... I'll play you for this one. It was my last slammer. Oh. And because I was betting it, I didn't have another to slam with. So I asked the kid if I could borrow his, and like the good sport he was, he let me. <laughs> oh my god, this is like a so small TV show. Oh, I, I won. And I was reunited with my Simba Spawn wow, Wars slammer. That's so much Rematch. It felt good. It was the beginning of a childhood gambling addiction. I was in the game. All my friends were, too. We played at every recess and honed our craft. People were even doing dumb ritual techniques before they slammed, like it was good luck. They honestly only worked half the time, but I guess that was enough for people to believe it was good luck. The recess grounds were ruthless. Certain kids developed reputations for being the best in the game, and it was suicide to try and challenge them. They were noob stoppers. If they challenged you, it was advised to reject them. But kids accepted anyway, because if you didn't, you'd be called a chicken. Oh my god. Honestly, I'm surprised there isn't an anime based on pogs and slammers. Not saying it'd be good, I'm just surprised it doesn't exist already. There were plenty of times where I lost all of my slammers, but like any gambling addiction, that wasn't enough to stop me from playing. I went to friends and asked for loans on their slammers and promised to owe them back just so I could get back in the game. Mike. I need your help. Could I borrow one of your... No, Domi. My best friend at the time nicknamed me Domi based on the hockey player Ty Domi, and so I went by Domi in elementary school. No, Domi. 
You've had enough. This game has ruined you. Mike, please. I, I have a family. <gasps> yeah, well, so do I. <laughs> right. How's your mom, by the way? She's good. Asked when he'll come over for dinner again. Mm, maybe this Friday? After you lend me a slammer! It was nuts. It got so bad that one time, some kid tripped or something and dropped all of his slammers, and instead of helping him, kids just looted him and ran. And I'm gonna be upfront. The Hunger Games. I was a well-behaved child, but I wasn't a model child. I was one of those kids. I'm sorry, I'm not proud of it, but I'm a changed man now. Now, I lose actual real money at casinos. And as a post pubescent adult man who grooms and takes care of himself, I can shave some dollars off my grooming products with Dollar Shave Club. Head over to dollarshaveclub.com.